the coconut oil. Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome back to Abby's Kitchen. Today's What I Eat in a Day YouTuber review is going to be on Riverdale superstar Madeleine Pesch. Now, you know I typically review a collection of What I Eat in a Day videos by a YouTuber, but in Madeleine's case, she's only got one. And a lot of you sent this particular video my way. And apparently, even more of you actually watched it. Just look at those numbers. So crazy. So this review will be short and sweet, so do let me know if you like these kinds of shorter videos in the mix. And before we get into the reviewing how a vegan actor eats, of course a few quick disclaimers. The information in this video is for entertainment and educational purposes only, so you should always speak to a healthcare provider about your unique healthcare needs. Also, while I do make a really big effort to include relevant and well-researched content in my videos, please keep in mind that what you see may not fully reflect a creator's diet, as I cannot review a full catalog of videos featured on their channel. However, this is the only What I Eat In A Day video on her channel. Also, please be sure to be kind in the comments both here and on Madeleine's channel. Also, a trigger warning that I will be discussing numbers, so that may be disturbing to my viewers. And of course, if that sounds like you, feel free to skip this video. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring that little bell so that you never miss out. All right, let's eat. Cool. I mean, you know I'm not one to critique someone's morning cup. I really don't care if you like your coffee with almond milk or whole dairy milk or no milk or sugar or stevia or whatever. You get your caffeine in however you see fit and let's move on. How someone likes their coffee, in my opinion, is just so personalized. In my experience, there's never any point to telling somebody to change it because it would just totally ruin their whole day. Having said that, if you do want to know what my thoughts are on natural sweeteners like stevia, you can check out my video right here. I'm gonna have a spoonful of coconut oil with my breakfast. It's kind of disgusting. But it's what my nutritionist told me to do. Yikes. Okay. Well, since Madeleine says she has a hard time getting in her healthy fats, her nutritionist suggested that she take a spoonful of coconut oil in the morning. Bottom up. Okay, where to start? Well, first of all, when we talk about healthy fats, we're generally talking about the ones that the research is pretty clear have heart health promoting benefits. So that is omega-3 polyunsaturated fats and monounsaturated fats. You can get omega-3s in things like fatty fish, flax, and walnuts, and you can get monounsaturated fats from nuts, seeds, and avocado. Healthy, right? We probably all can agree. But unlike almonds or hemp hearts, Coconut oil is predominantly saturated fat. In fact, it's really high in saturated fat. To compare, one tablespoon of other sources of saturated fat like butter or ghee or cream all contain less than 10 grams of saturated fat per tablespoon, whereas one tablespoon of coconut oil contains between 12 and 13 grams of saturated fat. Now, is this really an issue? Well, as I discussed in my very, very in-depth video on saturated fats, we don't really know. Research on saturated fat is really controversial, with some suggesting that it may increase the risk of heart disease, while other studies suggesting that there's no association. The research on coconut oil specifically is also pretty mixed. However, most quality research suggests that coconut oil can in fact raise bad LDL cholesterol while also raising good HDL cholesterol. Interestingly, despite being really high in saturated fats, some research suggests that it does not raise LDL cholesterol as much as other saturated fats, so it is possible that the net effect isn't bad. For instance, one 2017 randomized control trial compared the effects of butter, coconut oil, and olive oil on the cholesterol levels of 96 men and women with no previous history of chronic disease. Despite being wildly different in saturated fat content, there were no differences in the LDL levels of those who were fed coconut oil versus olive oil. In contrast, butter did significantly increase LDL cholesterol compared to the coconut oil, which was surprising considering that 
coconut oil is actually higher in saturated fat than butter. The different effects of these two saturated fats on cholesterol levels likely has to do with their differences in their fatty acid profiles, as coconut oil is made up of around 40% lauric acid, whereas butter is made up of mostly palmitic and stearic acids. Lauric acid is a unique medium chain fatty acid that's digested and metabolized differently from other fatty acids. So studies have shown that while lauric acid does have cholesterol raising effects, is proportionally higher for HDL cholesterol than LDL cholesterol. Another study in women with abdominal obesity also found that coconut oil increased HDL cholesterol and even helped reduce waist circumference. The other reason why coconut oil has been so health washed lately is because those MCTs that we talked about may also have some modest fat burning properties. Unfortunately, most coconut oil only contains around 50% MCTs and the MCT that is most rich in, lauric acid, doesn't really appear to have as many of those ketogenic fat burning benefits compared to capiric or capric acid, both of which together only make up around 12% of coconut oil's fat. With all of this in consideration, despite coconut oil being high in saturated fat, it may be a better choice compared to other saturated fats like butter as it does have a more favorable effect on cholesterol levels and therefore is a totally fine option for cooking with in moderation. But if I were Madeleine's nutritionist and I wanted her to up her healthy fats by increasing their consumption, I would probably encourage her to stick to the fats that we have better evidence as being healthy. So things like olive oil, nuts, seeds, avocado, flax, etc. It's also clear by watching her take a spoonful of it that it's not exactly a pleasurable experience, which is really too bad. I can think of so many more delicious ways to add 100 calories of fat to your diet, whether that's some olive oil on bread, a handful of nuts, some avocado on salad, etc. Anyways, let's eat something that she actually wants to eat. Meal, this one has no added sugar, egg veneer, frozen blueberries, more almond milk. I truly just love oatmeal so much. Love beefing up a packet of instant oatmeal with lots of nutritious toppings and add-ins. And this is a pretty nutrient dense oatmeal to start with actually. So I looked up this brand and it's got gluten-free oats, buckwheat, chia, amaranth, hemp, sorghum, and quinoa. And that's it. So no added sugar and it's got an impressive six grams of protein and four grams of fiber per pack. So we've got our fiber rich carbs and a little bit of protein and then we're going to add in some more energizing carbs in the blueberries and the bananas. So yummy. But I would say since she's using almond milk, we're not really getting much protein or healthy fat in this meal. And it's a pretty low calorie meal as well. So my suggestion to Madeleine to up the satiety factor would be to throw in a spoonful of peanut butter, add in a handful of hemp, flax, or chia, and use a higher protein milk like soy or pea protein instead of almond. I start my day with celery juice. I did that a lot in LA and I just haven't gotten into it here yet. I'm sure I'll do an update of what I eat in a day once I've really gotten into my routine here. I've only been here for like a month. I just enjoy kind of the ritualistic aspect. That's such an LA thing to say. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to rant about celery juice because I feel like I have to do it every damn video here on YouTube. But to summarize, because I'm tired, no celery juice won't cure cancer or arthritis or inflammation or whatever. And if it makes you lose weight, it's because it's like basically green water. But also juicing celery rids it of its beneficial fibers. So I'm gonna say it one more time for the folks in the back, drink your water, eat your celery, and find some kind of daily food or drink ritual that doesn't drain your pocket for very little nutritional value. Next. Any kind of breaded chicken burger. You can also go without the breading pan. So to start off, I'm obsessed with this avocado kale. It is my favorite kind of kale. Also referred to as dinosaur kale. Brand new fresh kale, it's super crispy. One bunch of loose tomato kale. Another boxed green like a baby kale or spinach or something like that. And some balsamic vinegar. Okay, so Madeleine is making her salad ahead of time to bring with her to her shoot. She's got two Eve's veggie burgers cooked in oil, some dinosaur kale, and um, more kale. 
I guess she likes kale. And then she's topping the whole thing off with some balsamic vinegar. Now I notice that she's not adding any oil to her salad and that's totally cool if she likes to avoid oils or whatever. I'm not trying to be the pro oil police, don't care. I really don't care if people limit their oils even though it's obvious by the coconut oil snack that she doesn't. But since she did specifically say that she's having a hard time getting in healthy fats and she did specifically say that the worst part of her day is eating a spoonful of coconut oil because of said challenge of getting healthy fats, why not just throw a little bit of oil on those greens? Not to mention, we know that all of those fat-soluble vitamins that kale is rich in, like vitamin A and K, depend on fat to be absorbed. So eating a fat-free salad is really kind of a missed opportunity for really good nutrition. As for the chicken burgers, I love a good convenience option, especially since Eve's is a Canadian brand, so represent. Um, also, two of these burger patties together will deliver an impressive 28 grams of protein and four grams of fiber, plus about a gram of omega-3. So I'm here for it, and I'm also really just happy that a celeb is eating an accessible convenience food that fans can actually also buy and easily make. Definitely appreciate the realness. I still think that this is a pretty light lunch considering we have just had our protein and some veg. So if she wanted, she could throw in some berries or some pre-cooked grains or a bun for her burger just to add a little bit more energizing carbs. Let's see what she has for snack. The blueberry thrill is just blueberries. I do no date, almond butter, some kind of protein. I choose clean vegan protein and almond milk. Okay, so before she eats her lunch, because again, she pre-made it for work, she did a workout and she picked up a smoothie en route home. So this one, she explains, has blueberries, almond butter, some vegan protein powder, and almond milk, and she requests no dates in hers. That sounds like a really great balanced smoothie and exactly how I would aim to build one at home as well. We've got carbs and fiber from the berries, protein fiber and fat in the almond butter, and some extra protein in the vegan protein powder. And since she's assumedly getting like 20 to 30 grams of protein in this smoothie, I actually don't think it's an issue in the context of this day that her breakfast was lacking in protein and fat. Some people just thrive on a higher carb, easy to digest breakfast. And as long as there's something substantial coming up for snack, everything kind of balances itself out. So while I often do give suggestions on how to optimize individual meals and snacks here, the reality is none of that actually matters in real life without the context of an entire day or week. Let's see what else she has to say. I don't believe in calorie counting. If anything, look at calories to make sure I'm getting enough. Listening to your body is so important. Amazing. You guys know that's exactly what I stand for here. And I'm sure it's not easy to navigate food and body image as a young Hollywood actress. Hi, is it possible for me to just get a 16 ounce cold brew, please? Again, nothing much to say about that other than the fact that it makes me kind of anxious to be drinking coffee later on in the day. <laughs> Spoken like a true insomniac. All right, let's see what she does at work. I love kombucha. I probably drink about one a day. Not every day, but I do like drinking it a lot. Kombucha is healthy soda. So Madeleine describes kombucha as a healthy soda. And while I don't like to categorize or dichotomize foods, I mean, she's kind of not wrong. I do love anything that's fizzy and I'm a huge fan of kombucha because it is naturally low in calories and sugar and it contains antioxidants and organic acids from the tea plus some probiotics. But as I discussed in my Kelty O'Connor video, the amount of probiotics that you're getting in a bottle of kombucha is pretty negligible in comparison to an actual supplement. We're talking the difference between 10 to 50 billion CFUs and five to 10 million in a bottle of booch. Having said that, I personally love the stuff. I love that it's tangy and kind of sweet, but not as sweet as soda or juice. So if she likes the flavor as much as I do, amazing. Great choice in my books. Let's hit up dinner.
That does look delish. Um, and I love how easy it was to pull off. So this lentil pasta she's using is higher in protein and fiber than traditional pasta. So her bowl has about 21 grams of protein and six grams of fiber per serving. So that's pretty impressive. So that way we've got our protein in the pasta, fat in the vegan cheese, and lots of colorful fiber rich veg. Love it. This is absolutely something I would make myself. And it's a simple fast meal for single folks at home. I know how unmotivating it can be to actually cook when it's just you at home, but I think that Madeleine really makes it look totally doable and easy. I think if I had any suggestions, again, just because I'm thinking back to Madeleine's self-confessed challenge of being able to get in enough fat and healthy fats, I would maybe add in like a good little drizzle of olive oil on top because while she might have pissed off her Italian fans with the lentil pasta, maybe she can earn back their respect with some liquid gold. Just saying. Okay, great. I mean, totally delicious, easy bedtime snack. And I'm glad someone has given cantaloupe some love. I feel like cantaloupe and honeydew melon for that matter are always the sad, pale, rejected components of a fruit salad bowl. And then every restaurant like fills the bowl with melon and then carefully styles a few nice pieces of strawberries and blueberries and, and cherries on top just to disguise the fact that you're paying $15 for the fruit nobody actually wants. So it is nice to know somebody with as much clout as Madeline is a fan. Maybe we can make cantaloupe like the new cauliflower or kale. Just kidding. Please don't. Like, Please don't. We really don't need another grocery store shortage during COVID. <laughs> but anyways, uh, yeah, I really can't say anything negative about eating cantaloupe for dessert. It's awesome. It's easy. It's nutritious and it's affordable. So COVID, let's keep it that way. Now let's answer a big question here. Is this way of eating balanced? Well, like I said, after watching a bunch of Madeleine's videos, it's pretty clear that food isn't exactly her beat. So I'm making an analysis off of just really one main video. But you guys asked me so much about this particular day of eating. So why don't we break it down? In short, I would say, yes, Madeleine's diet is totally balanced and adequate. Trigger warning, I'm about to talk numbers, but she is getting over 2,500 calories, 120 grams of protein, 300 grams of carbs, 66 grams of fiber, and 107 grams of fat. So if we look at that as macro percentages, we're looking at about a 46 carb, 36 fat, and 18% protein split. So despite her concern that she wasn't getting enough fat, for an average woman, it looks like she's doing just fine. If anything, her carbs are on the lower range of average, but still, it all looks pretty balanced and good to me. Also, her overall caloric intake looks totally adequate for an active young woman, which honestly is always refreshing to see. Her diet, while not super exciting or Instagrammable, is actually really nutrient rich and balanced. My analysis didn't pull up any major deficiencies or red flags, other than maybe vitamin B12, omega-3 and D, all of which are common on a vegan diet, but I am hoping she is taking some vegan friendly vitamins, even though I didn't hear her talk specifically about her supplement regime in this video. In another video, I did see her kind of divvying up her vitamins, so I'm assuming she's getting all of those in one go. I also appreciate how approachable her meals are and that she relies on kitchen shortcuts like jarred pasta sauce and frozen veggie burgers to get a nutritious meal on the table for one. And I get that when you're busy, it is so hard to be motivated to cook for yourself. So bravo for her for making it a priority. As for her perspective on food, well, I didn't really hear her explicitly demonize foods or give specific advice around how people should be eating. Even her whole coconut oil eating thing was done strictly out of a recommendation by her nutritionist to get in more fat. And whether I agree with that recommendation or not, I am glad that she leaves those things really just to the pros. As another example, in her self-care video where she shares her skincare routine, she specifically says that she's not a dermatologist, that this is just what she does. So it is great to hear those disclaimers peppered throughout. 
I did see her do a video on cryotherapy, but the worst that she said in that video was that she was pretty sure it would boost the effects of her workout. Kind of nondescript, but also not untrue from a recovery standpoint. It's just too bad that the guy at the spa who she interviewed spewed off a bunch of unsubstantiated claims. And while there may be some health benefits linked to cryotherapy, particularly when it comes to pain relief and exercise recovery, there isn't a ton of great research to support much else. When it comes to the alleged weight loss benefits, the theory behind this is that brown adipose tissue in the body, AKA brown fat, burns fats to make energy when the body is exposed to extreme cold. While one 2016 study found that three minutes at negative 166 Fahrenheit twice a day for five days did not result in any weight or fat changes in men, other studies found that about two hours daily may reduce body fat by 2%, with another seeing up to 3%. That may sound convincing, but two hours of your day and we don't even know how long these results last, if at all. The FDA has also even warned of the lack of evidence for cryotherapy and cautions towards the possible side effects, including numbness and skin irritation. Also, a cryotherapy session will ring you up about $100 a pop. So I guess if Madeleine's ad revenue for a video on cryotherapy covers the cost of the treatment, it's worth it for funsies, but for the average person, uh, not so much. Ultimately, I think her channel is pretty fun to watch, mainly because she's hilarious and also she has amazing effing hair. So jelly. Um, and I'm also not even a Riverdale fan, so that says something too. But anyways, this is not really a channel that I would recommend or warn people about when it comes to wellness information, because thankfully, there isn't really too much explicit wellness recommendations to be found. And as it should be, because she's an actress, not a nutritionist or a dietitian or any other health professional. But if you like Riverdale, you like gingers, or you like a lot of random vlogs, you're probably going to like watching Madeleine Pesch. And folks, that is all for today. I'm keeping it short and sweet before my baby wakes up screaming to be fed. Oh my gosh, because everything is a race against his hunger cues. So that, my friends, is mom life. But there you go. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below with who you'd like to see me review next. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring that little bell so that you never miss a video. And I will see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.